Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NFL Talk with Ox and Fox. Mike King here. I got the gentleman NFL alumni, Ken Ox and Don Deion Fox. Uh, we're lying in the football season down. Uh, gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, Mr. Fox, we're going to start off with you. Uh, tell us who you are and what you do. Deion Fox, <clears throat> founder and president of 5756 Foundation. Um, I'm also the president of the NFL alumni chapter here in Richmond, Virginia, for the state of Virginia. Also uh, working with kids, AD at George Wood High School, Richmond Public Schools. Found out they're breaking ground. We'll be breaking ground this spring, late spring. Uh, so I guess the new George Wood, and so they figure out what the new name is going to be, is uh, <laughs> you're going to start construction late this spring. Um, 2023. So looking forward to that. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's right. Uh, George Wood Tice, as you say, the pride of the South Side. Uh, Ken Oxen Dunn. How you doing? Oxenboxsportsgroup.com, Box SG on Instagram, Vice President of NFL Richmond, working beside Deion Fox, um, and everything that we do, uh, trying to help the community grow and uh, trying to help uh, the connected docs with uh, with the community and the youth. Very quickly, I want to get on, and uh, these gentlemen played at the highest level in NFL. Uh, so we thank for their time. What they're also doing is making a big impact on the community. This past week, Deion Fox, we'd like to thank you for hosting uh, our man, Smart Lemons, who came over uh, and interviewed you. So he was uh, injured. And they told him uh, in a football game for Henrico High School, told him he wouldn't be able to move anything and not breathe on his own. Well, he rolled in there breathing on his own and talking smack, too. So, uh, And mm -hmm. Fox, I think he's out after the watch, man. So when you come, you better put the watch in your pocket because he he's out after it. Yeah, that that, that, that was my uh, second watch, third watch he was after, man. So, you know, he, 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 he got a quick eye for it. He he does have a quick eye. All right, let's talk about Demar Hamlin, uh, gentlemen. Uh, since we talked the last time, he has improved. I mean, serious injury, injury. The world stopped, and when he came to, he said, "Did we win? Is is that a football player or what?" All day long, yeah, yeah, and 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 that's how we've been wired. You know, you you, you know the and and is to play through his shoe. You look at Tua, you know, he continuously trying to come back to play uh, through what he could know with all the data and everything else with brain injury, you know. Pete, you know, those things, so if, if a football player, if he is able to do and get back on the field, you know, they're, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna try to put their, their, their bodies back on the line for their, their brother, their team. There we go. All right, gentlemen, let's talk. We're, what are we in, week 18? Week 18. Week, week 18. And because of the injury, it's thrown a little monkey wrench into the system. Uh, but we're going to yeah. start off Ken Ox and I. What's the first game we're going to talk about today? Um, the Chiefs and the Raiders. Um, it's And that's a craziness in itself. You yes, know, sir. So you look at it's crazy Josh McDaniels trying to get his, you know, getting his guy, you know, but also you see the the growth of, you know, this, I don't know, Deion, could you call it the immaturity of the, of the quarterbacks uh, or the greed of the quarterbacks uh, or, or the, or does he, you know, just leave him and this one, all right, well, just pay me my money. And then at the end of the year, I say, peace. Well, it's been a lot of that going on with the quarterbacks around the league. Um, well, a few of them anyway, where they've been moved out um, the same way they did with uh, Heineke. He first went to come in, then Wentz gets hurt, and Heineke comes in, and Heineke doesn't play well. Then they put Wentz in again, and then Wentz comes back and does the exact same thing or even worse than what Heineken does. And now they're going with, oh, well, um, we're going to see about next year. So you have a lot of teams that, you know, have done that. And now you have some teams that have played themselves out of a playoff spot because of 
of the shuffling of the card. Um, it you have some starters that was that because they were messing with Aaron Rodgers like that at the beginning of the year, oh, yes. you know, and then all of a sudden he started winning games and now he's a playoff contender, you know. <laughs> so it is. I think it's between the coaches trying to keep their job and then the quarterbacks upset because they're losing their job. You're not giving me enough help. It's, it's, it's been a crazy year. It's been a crazy year. I've seen stuff like this before, but not with as many teams as we've seen it happen to this year. And then people with the walking off, I'm done. Send me somewhere. Baker Mayfield was another one, three teams in the same, in the same season. So it's been very chaotic and uh, a lot of chest poking out of I'm the best and the, why, why am I not playing? Yeah. So yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad cool. I was never good enough to play quarterback. As a, as a fan of the game, gentlemen, is it, is it almost time for people to give up on it, on the Josh McDaniels thing and just like, okay. I mean, we know we give him a shot because of the, the Patriots connection. And, I, and how many times, even when you have the horses, you don't you don't come through? You know, I just you know I, I think you just gotta give other people opportunities. <laughs> you no, know, you're not. You know, obviously, you know you look at Josh McDaniels and what he did with the Patriots, and but you have a t- the, the 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 staff and the coaches and the pieces that you have you know and so and I think that's for him you know that may be you'll see what he gets and then there's a lot of people they're better coordinators than they are head coaches they can't manage the pieces that's true so uh Mr. Fox who do you have sir we know you just- yeah uh, no no I, I agree with Ken because it's always been that way you have some people that are better uh, coordinators than they are head coaches, you know, they're better OCs than they are, you know, being the head guy or better better DCs than they are being the head guy. And they give them a shot because they were so good as their coordinator. And they figure out, uh, no, let's go ahead and pull them back. And as far as giving a chance, like Ken, you talking about giving somebody else a chance to take this, to take their head coaching spot. Just like we thought they were gonna give uh the coach in Denver a little bit longer and they got rid of him like the next we were just talking about it. Yeah. And the next week, you know, he was out of there. <laughs> so it also depends on the organization too, because if an organization has a certain amount of uh 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 want or need to produce a winning program right now to get back to that championship caliber that they used to have, they want immediate gratification. So, oh, if you're not doing it, boom, we got to find somebody else. So the idea of it is being from Philly when they say trust the process, (laughs) you're the guy who put, you may not be around. Exactly. Whatever it is at that moment, you know, uh, because we've seen we've seen similar situations this season with what three or four other teams and their head coaches are still there. Yep. You know, Denver's not. That is true. All right. So I would guess we're all going with the Kansas City Chiefs. It oh, depends. oh, wait, wait, wait. Look at Ox. It, it, well, it just depends on they rest people this week. But I don't think they still have implications trying to get that first round. So I, I take the Chiefs. All right, good. No, what's the next game? Uh, Titans and Jaguars. Big game. Big game. And, you know, do we think the Titans, they're, they're, see, they're, they're being a seasoned group of players can make it over the younger Jaguar team? And so, but I like the Jaguars, but they're hot. They, they are hot, and, and their QB might have the – he might have the mojo. Yeah. He might have, they they uh, loving him too. They loving him too. He he's a hot subject right now. They loving him right now. And um, you know, as much as I like Deuce Deuce for the Titans, you know, and the things he can do late in the game. Um, where, where they playing? Where they playing in Jacksonville? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, they in Jacksonville. 
Yeah, we I'm gonna go ahead and roll with them Jaguars this week. As far as just on how well they've been playing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is NFL Talks. Ox and Fox Mike King here. Uh, heard on ESPN Richmond. I got the fellas here talking week 18 NFL football. Uh Ken, what's the what's the next what's the next game? Falcons. Tampa. You know, they they didn't clinch the division. You know, and this will be it'll be interesting if they continue to play their players to try to keep, you know, everything moving and just polish up on, on some things. Uh, or if they, I can, I can see their, their starters playing a half and possibly getting some guys in later, but it, it's going to be, be interesting how they play their veterans in this game. There you go. Right. Mr. Fox, what's your thoughts, man? Where, <clears throat> uh, where they play, where they playing, Ken? Atlanta. In Atlanta? Yep. Al- Atlanta's going through some uh, uh, growing pains right now, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and roll the other way on this one. All right. So, uh, gentlemen, as a, as a resident senior citizen here on, on, the, on this show, is it lack of respect for – there might have been a time that you guys might not have thought for a second – to the Tom Brady team. I don't care who he had. He could have been him and 10 Mees. You would have taken Tom and Mees. Now you guys are like, mm, where are they playing that? Is that because the man has got a few miles on him? He's looking human. No, <clears throat> no I, I look at home field advantage. Uh, I look at the situation is the reason why we play the game is because, you know, anybody looks good on paper, but yes. you know, there's, there's a thing that is called an upset, you know, so it can happen anywhere, anytime, any place with two different teams. It doesn't matter what the teams are. And, you know, we all know that they like TB 12. We all know that they think that he can work magic and he has, he's done it. He's come back t- at times this year, but at times this year, he's not looked, like Real. the normal TV 12. Mm-hmm. So, but I think right now he's a little hungrier for um, the playoffs. I think the rest of the team has also um, seen and tasted that inkling of like, you know what, we got a shot. So let's go out here and ball out, you know, and leave it all on the field. So I, mm-hmm. I, I think they have a real shot this time just because uh, between them and then um, – We'll talk about Green Bay a little bit later as well. There you go. All right. This is NFL Talks. Ken Ox and Don Deion Fox here with us on ESPN Richmond. Uh, this is Mike King Miz Radio. Uh, Ox, what's the next game, man? Uh, we got the Pats and Buffalo. This is a game implication type type game. So, you know, Buffalo, they win. And what I think they get, they have the, um, the number one, they get the – they. They get the number one seed if they win. But this is what's crazy. Because they're in the same division in the AFC East. Buffalo so Buffalo's the already won their division. He had a division. But I think this win gives them overall over Kansas City to had a bye. Yeah. And so, and this is what's crazy. If Buffalo and the Chiefs, if they both win or tie, it's going to be a, they have to play that AFC title game in a neutral site because of the Cincinnati and... Um, Bengals cancellation. What do you think about that? <laughs> the neutral site. Yes. Mm, so, so there's no bye week. It, where does it even get played, though? In between the two destinations? A uh, destination to be determined? Who knows? Hey, you so, know, I mean, you, you go, really quickly. Go ahead. You guys are guys who play. Let's walk through. All right, so we saw what happened with Buffalo with DeMar Hamlin. They don't play. We weren't sure what was happening with the game. Let's walk us through as players and as a team organization how you get ready to play again. Like, okay, uh, like walk through a couple of days or so. So we're, we're at Saturday. What was happening, say, Tuesday? Wednesday, Thursday, to get ready to nobody, play. Nobody, 
No, yeah. nobody's head was in it. Nobody's head was into doing anything other than worrying about their teammate. They probably didn't get back to doing anything until they found out that he woke up and was responsive. And then the next day when he woke up and they said that he was communicating, uh, even though he was writing, and they found out that his neurological uh, uh, part was like didn't have any damage, Sigh of relief. They could they could somewhat get back to business. They're still worried about their brother, but he, at this point, it's not as bad as what it looked like Monday night on the field. Yeah. Okay. Then what they do is, from as far as a coaching staff, they're just going back and they're they're going to pull up their old game plan, and then they're just going to crunch in. And as soon as everything they they get a sigh of relief, then they start they go and they pull that old game plan up and then they start just crunching what could happen new. And so move forward from that. Real quickly. So let, let's stay on that right there. And as guys who played the game, as we watch say ESPN, they went into the two minute drill covering that right there because it wasn't something that nobody, had, I mean, they, they practiced, they thought about, but all of a sudden, uh, ESPN seemed like they had to go to the scramble offense. What was it like when you looked at players and you saw them, whether it was like Booger, McFarland, RC, you know, when you looked at them talking about playing and the players, and all of a sudden they stopped being football players and they became human. Really quickly touch on that. Quite the answer. I mean, the human aspect of it always comes into play. Uh, we are human first, you know. Uh, Ken and I both have gone through situations where our teams have done well, our teams have not done well. And, you know, yes, we understand we're in a business that we entertain people, you know, on a, on a uh, athletic platform at the highest level. And at the same time, you represent that team all the time and you're always a representative of them and the shield. Being able to go out there and still be human, like, from something uh, as bad as that injury was to just being able to go out and have something to eat with your family. You know, um, people just look at us as football players, not humans, not names or whatever, like a name that plays football, not a name that's human, not a name that likes to, you know, uh, do normal stuff like normal people. Not that we get hurt like normal people. Yeah, we still get hurt. We we suffer loss. We suffer injury. We 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 go through these types of things. We have emotions as well, even though we've been brought up and shown not to show these other emotions that are more on the human side. Okay, that are more into anything outside of aggression. Uh, intensity, things like that that you would see on the football field. So when you see these guys, even guys that have been out of the league, like I said, I was up until 1.30, almost 2 o'clock in the morning, listening to the commentary on ESPN and insights about how other people, you know, how other players felt. Some of the other uh, sports writers and commentators were talking. Uh, they kept going back to the field. Even the women that were on there, you saw their emotion quicker than you saw some of the guys. The guys were speaking it, but you saw the emotions outside of the players. You saw the emotion on the women as well, because I'm thinking they've never played football, but they can imagine having a relative, a brother, a husband, a, a, a son out there going through that. Mm -hmm. And then you see us thinking about that being us in that same situation and the effects that it may have on our kids, our wives, our girlfriends, our mothers, our relatives. So it was something that, um, you know, it still sits with me right now. You know, like what, what, like I, you, you have no idea how to handle that situation until you're in that situation. Mm -hmm. Can I send Don? Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. Now, Dave, give us your thoughts on, on follow-up on Mr. Fox. Just, just like I said, you know, we talked about that morning uh, afterwards, is that you saw the the humanization of players who that at instant you saw a lot of them break down and, and 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 we couldn't see what was going on but after listening to uh, a lot of the commentary you saw guys they knew instantly when they started doing cpr that something was not right and you saw guys instantly embrace each other and break down you know so these gladiator gladiators that people always look at that really was a a a a just an eye opener i feel with you know a lot of people who are watching the game and this understanding that these guys who want run into each other they they're not just these these guys who can just bang and then get up and go and be all right and you know and they not only the, it's not it's not just affecting the person who gets hurt it's affecting more than that there you go nfl insight two guys who played at that level Ken Oxen on Deion Fox. Uh, this is uh, NFL Talks with Oxen Fox, Mike King here. All right, Ken, what, what's the game next? The Ravens and Saints. So another one affected by. Yep. And this and, is the, the, the playoff implication is um, if the Chiefs um, clinch, a, the, the Chiefs can clinch this AFC win with a win or a loss by the Bills. And then the Bills can clinch this AFC with a win and a Chiefs loss. So um, so this is, you know, um, a part of that, and that's, that's another part of those pieces of the puzzle that's gonna end up making where these, uh, if it's an AFC neutral site situation. But again, now you go back to the Ravens and them getting in playoffs now and, and their quarterback, you know, um, he Lamar has not been playing and they've been losing. And, and Mr. Fox, we're going back to that a business decision. Uh, but you know, yeah. every game that he didn't play, and then he saw Monday night and he said, I'm gonna continue not to play. I need my money, I need to be taken care of. Exactly, and that's a very smart decision, I think, that he's making. Mm -hmm. Um, I think all players. If they have the, um, you know, leeway to do that, they should because they have to think about their future after the game. Yeah, you know, their future, their future during the game and their future after the game. It's not guaranteed. Uh, we, I was talking the other day with someone, and they, you know, it's still a big subject um, with everybody on all levels that play any level of sports you know, any type of sport. They're still talking about, you know, you think he's going to come back. No, he's uh, – honestly, I wish uh, D. Hamlin a full recovery. However, the NFL, we already know, is not going to let that young man come back and play. Mm -hmm. Because uh, You know what? I hadn't even – okay. I hadn't even thought about that. You're, you're going to say there's no way he coming no. back. There's no. no way he comes back from that hit going into cardiac arrest on the field, regardless of what type of recovery he has. He could he could be a hundred percent green light, you know, hey, he's good after that. They're not going to chant him playing again and it happening a second time on the field. They're mm -hmm. not they're gonna change just like when Tua got hurt. And they came back and played and came back and they changed protocols that week. They yeah. changed they sit down doing some protocols as of Monday night, Tuesday morning. They're doing protocols right now. So you said that's Thursday. that's the business side of it. That is the business side of it because if not, you're talking about the liability that the, the league does not like liability. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, I'm being honest. They do not yeah. like that type of liability. And with that type of liability to fall on them, like, like Mike, you and I were talking uh, the other day when you were at the school when we, when we were setting up, and I was asking you some questions. You know, I was being the sponge. I was being the glass that was half full getting some information. One of the things that you were talking about, you know, is branding, okay? I turned on Zoom this morning. 
and I see it. The only one that's not is me. I'm having technical difficulties, so I'm using my phone. Fine. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm unprepared. I will not be next time. However, let's go further with the branding. NFL is a brand. That shield is a brand. Okay? It's not going to be the Buffalo Bills brand. It's going to be the NFL's brand. The NFL does not want anything to stain their brand. Yep. They do not need anything, especially of that magnitude, to put a bigger stain than what, like, because, you know, you go through your hiccups. So the concussion thing, how they handled that, all those mm-hmm. stuff they went through when people were trying to go through the protocols, the stuff that happened where they said that, you know, African-American players were at a lower aptitude to start off with anyway, which is mm-hmm. why we didn't have much change in us in our baseline when they tested us when we went through the, the, the concussion testing. Then they had to go through the courts. So, so it was. So you're talking about different things that have been detrimental to the shield. This is one more thing that if they don't handle it correctly, it's going to be detrimental to the shield. Yeah. They do not want that detriment. They do not want that detriment. You think about the stuff they was going through with uh, the military. When Kaepernick was taking the knee, they they tried to twist it and say he was doing it uh, with the military. It had nothing to do with the military. Yeah. Had nothing to do with the military. But, you know, that's a stain. It got rid of him because it was over top of the league because other people started doing it. Now, you know, like four or five weeks later, everybody was doing it and nothing else happened to them. But they had to have their martyr. You know, mm-hmm. you talk about the stuff with the uh with with the certain clubs went through sexual harassment stuff in the workplace. So what that's a stain. You can't have that. Because the the female Fan base is huge in the NFL. Huge. Huge. So, you know, so you have to make sure that you cover everything. Think about every couple of weeks we have something new that we are doing and supporting. Uh, like when, when when you see, when you when I say we, I'm think as a former player, I see it. I notice the stuff on the field. I notice the stuff that, the gear that's being made that, uh, is being highlighted for this particular month or this particular week or whatever the case is, you know, and I'm for it because you have to use that platform to bring awareness to a lot of things. They do that to take those stains off of stuff that happens because stuff happens in business. There you go. Okay? One of Mike, Mike, uh, this is uh, NFL Talks. <clears throat> Sorry, folks. Uh, get oxidized. What's the next game? We're going to blast through these right here. Yeah. Next game we got um hey sorry, real quick, real quick, real quick. Breaking news. They removed the tube from um from Demar Hamlin's they they removed his breathing tube. He's breathing on his own right now. So just to let you know that. Just want to give you that breaking news. Breaking news. That's what we do here. We break news. Ken Ox and I Deion Fox. That he is a crap reporter on the sideline. Thank you, sir, for that. That's good. And remember when we talked to uh Smart Lemons, he said when his mom was like, you know, breathing on his own was gonna be a big thing. And so that's a big deal for, for D. Hamlin out there. Ox, what's the next game, man? Uh, we have um, Minnesota and the Bears. Well, maybe Minnesota might be ready to play because they, they weren't they off last week? Yeah, they was off. Yeah, they've been slipping. And then in general, you know, but I, I, <laughs> is that the is I, that I don't I, I don't think they play starters this week. I don't think they play starters the whole game. If they play them, they don't play them the whole game because they're already in. Aaron, now, Brady? They are in, but it switches. Like, if they lose, it uh, it can send them to be a, a third seed. Like, there's some things that could happen that could put them in the second seed. But I don't see San Francisco losing, though. That's just, if San Francisco if, if San Francisco loses, then that, that'll that put them uh, in that second seed. So, you so know. So, you got Ken Down? Who you got in this one? I like uh, Minnesota though, Mr. Fox. I feel like I feel like Minnesota. I think they're gonna make a rebound from last week. Yeah, Minnesota. It is Fox. Next game for us. Uh, Houston and the Colts. <laughs> Just uh, the, it's a, as they say, this is gonna be a barn burner. Somebody got to win. Yeah, and so, and I like Houston in this game. This they've been they 
they continue to play teams hard. They play hard. Yeah, and the Colts, they got a lot of distractions going on with a lot of stuff that, you know, Jeff Saturday is talking about in, you know, those parts. And, you know, it, it's – but it's two teams that they're trying to play for who will get, you know, um, top picks in the draft right now. So that's the other – uh, coin, the other side of this coin. And also, they plan to see who's going to have a job next year as well, too. Those players are going out there. They're going to play hard to see who's going to be there next year. So that exactly. is right now, those teams are, are planning for, for the future of the 23-24 uh, season. So it's, it's going to be a, a good game as far as the effort that you see. Um, I think I'm going to pull for Houston on this one, the Texans. Um, yep. so, Lovey, Lovey knows how to get in their heads. Those guys they're playing, and like Ken said, they're they, they're almost there. They, mm-hmm. They've gone through their transition as well, so it's, it it should be a good game. But I'm I'm gonna go with uh, Houston this week. Go with yep. Houston, all right, Houston. This is NFL talks. Can auction down next game? Jets and Miami. Jets could be a spoiler in this one, um, but I don't know if from a court. Well, shoot, both teams' quarterback is a hot mess. So I thought, um, um, what's oh boy, the backup for Miami. Um, Teddy Bridgewater? No. Yeah, I, he got hurt last week. He got in the first quarter. Yeah. So you know they, they they plan on training wheels this week, both yeah. teams. So are they going to shut it? The two it, it shut down. What do you think the long term prognosis is for him, uh, Mr. Fox? Uh, with as many, it's it's a possibility they could you know have to do further well it's not a possibility they're going to do further evaluations on him to see what's going on he's had too many concussions in a short period of time and if they prove to be something that hey if you get another one you're going to have to stop you know dolphins are going to reevaluate what's going on the league's going to reevaluate like i said it's been a lot of that going on this season so i hope the best for him but you won't see Tua in week 18 other than on the sideline with a headset on and a clipboard trying to help his teammates out and uh, help the backup, you know, get certain reads and uh, have a good game. Um, so yeah. I, I'm just, I, I'm, I don't want to, we don't want to see any more unnecessary uh, injuries going yeah. on. Yeah. Real quickly, uh, Ken, uh, when you look at, at the injuries to the quarterbacks and after they give them a ton of money, do you think the NFL is going to rethink giving guaranteed money? Is Are we going to start looking at that? Well, <clears throat> this year just been a, a – well, you could I, – I can see them giving a percentage guaranteed and then and then those all on, on, um, on just, you know, on their merit and their uh, stats and, you know, and just uh, how the, the length of – the starts that they get um but yeah because now you're seeing these but the thing is they're going to say well it's the mobile quarterbacks that's getting hurt but no it's they're getting hurt in the pocket so instead of them the two is not a mobile quarterback no I mean, he can move, but he's not he's not lamar mobile let's, exactly let's, 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 let, me, let me yeah let's let me be clear on that he's not lamar mobile go ahead ken yeah so you know it, it's just one of those things where you continuously um you know, but this quarterback is the face of the franchise. So you make him happy, you know, a lot of other pieces are happy. And so, and then you, you don't get the situation you got up in um, Baltimore right now where, you know, cause like I said, guys are going to try to play hurt or not if they have a chance to win and help their team uh, progress. But now you have the point in, in, in NFL history where, hey, I got to I gotta work, watch out for me first. And if you take care of me, I will take care of you. There you go. Week 18, Insight NFL Talks. Mike King here. Talking with the guys, Ken Ox and Don Deion Fox. Already, uh, Ken, next game we're going to chat about. Panthers and the Saints. That's that's another game they just playing the who, who, who will get what. Panthers want to, I think both of these teams are playing to finish out the season. So they can have momentum into the next season. There you go, uh, uh, Mr. Fox. Who you got in that one? I'm gonna roll with the Panthers. I like how they've been playing. Although yeah. those Saints um, have been kind of strong, I like the Panthers. They made a turnaround. I I, I like the uh, progress that they've made. 
over the past three, four weeks. So it's it's good. Rolling with this, rolling with them. Already, Ox, uh, who you got? Browns and Pittsburgh. Implication that Pittsburgh win and Miami loses, Pittsburgh is in the playoff. So, you know, Tomlin been getting these guys. Tomlin been coaching. Yeah. I mean, he did bring him back from the scrap heap. So, uh, and they're talking about, is this his best coaching ever? I don't know, but only thing I, I can say is. Coaching ever, but it's, it's pretty good considering what he has. You have to look at what he has on that team and not to take anything away from anybody on that team or any other team, because once you make it to the level, you deserve to be there. However, yeah. I will say he does not have the same caliber of talent on that team surrounding his quarterback. He does not have the same amount of uh, talent. Like his quarterback, his, his, quarter, his quarterback is not Big Ben last two, three, four years. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, re-grooming, he's re-grooming his quarterback, okay? Yeah. He, they, they see, you know, shots of what he could be, but he has toned them down and brought them together. He has, he has, I mean, in those skill positions, he has a very young team. A mm-hmm. very young team. Putting the pieces back together. It's, it's rebuilding for Pittsburgh. And in this yeah. rebuilding season, he wins this game and get into the playoffs this year, then, yeah, it's a, it's a turnaround for them because they started the season off. It was rough. It was, it was rough. rough. The only thing I can say is I'm old as I don't know what. And for them, I had three coaches basically my whole lifetime. And I think we might be up to 20 coaches with the Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that just says something right there. So right. shout out to uh, Mike T and, and the folks over in Pittsburgh. All right, Ken, what's the next game? Uh, the Chargers and Denver. The Chargers in the playoffs. Denver is trying to figure out next year. So, you know, they just wait. Yeah. This is one. All right, we're going to move on. Next gentlemen, next game. <laughs> the Giants and Philly. Let me let me noodle on this one for a minute. You know where I'm going. Yes. The sad part is now we need this one. Yes. And, yeah, we, need, and we want and need some help. When you talked about upset a minute ago, I am I'm definitely pulling for that team out of Washington. Landover, I don't care where they're out of, but I am going to be a big fan of the Washington football team slash commanders, ex Redskins. I don't care who they are. I ain't going to be a big fan this week. Yeah. So if, uh, and this is crazy. If, if the Giants beat you guys, y'all are fifth seed, all right? If Dallas beats or ties Washington, San Francisco is the first seed. Dallas loses, you guys are second seed. You guys win. Y'all are the first seed. It, is it the tale of Philadelphia? Is oh, it in our DNA that we were talking, we were talking about running a table of, uh, you know, like 15 minutes ago. And here we're there, we're talking about a fifth seed. Yeah, right. Jeez. So this yeah. is. Well, the whole you, NFC, you have a lot of NFC teams this year that have done well. Yes. You have a lot of NFC teams this year that have done well, surprisingly well, and have been strong throughout the whole season. Like Minnesota did it on on the you know on the quiet tip, and then you had San Fran that was you know making their ways with the loss of two quarterbacks. You know they got a they got a uh, Mr. Irrelevant in there. And he's doing his thing, you know, winning games with that defense mm-hmm. over there. Then you're talking about. You have this game coming up where you had the Eagles doing their thing in the NFC East, which is usually, arguably, one of the worst divisions in NFL football each and every year for the last five plus years. Uh, mm-hmm. Where an eight team would win would win that division. That's true. Yeah, you know. So I mean, even back to when the Giants won the Super Bowl and they finished they finished their season eight and eight regular season and went in as a wild card and beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So. You know, it's one of those things where it's going to be a good game because of division rivalry. You got two division rivalry games going on today with the NFC East, okay? And both of them have playoff uh, placement implications. Yeah. Like where you guys going to fall for three of those teams. Mm-hmm. You know, Washington, 
Washington plays them, played themselves out of the playoffs the last two weeks. So now, you know, I'm rooting for the rest of the NFC East to be placed high and, and do well. You know, um, Dallas last, though, um, just because, I, you know, that's how I am. But, Mike, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to roll with, you know, those Eagles. I'm going to soar with the Eagles this week because I believe that they can pull it out. Um, and manage that game and 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 do some good work. So, and they hungry. Statement they're hungry. They up. statement week. People are questioning yeah. us. People question. Uh, I think Mr. Ox, what you got? So you're going to take. You you can just go ahead and say we could take a minute and say who you got for that that Eagles game. I like Philly, and okay. because Philly, Philly's at home, you know they know it's a must win because they want that 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 buy to hopefully get Hurts back, you know, um, and they know the implications of this game um, going home field advantage versus, you know, having to be on the road. That is true. We like some home cooking. All right, Ken, who you got next? The Cardinals and 49ers. Um, 49ers blow them, blow Cardinals out. They have no chance. 49ers. 49ers. And J.J. White on the farewell tour right now, too, so. Right. Oh, they NFL Talks, Ken Ox and Don Deion Fox here uh, with Mike King. We're on ESPN Richmond. Uh, Ken, the next game. Uh, uh, L.A., the Rams versus Seattle. Seattle's implication game for them. So, you know, and the Rams, they're just a shell of themselves. So, yeah. Like I'm I said, Seattle looks uh, good. Ever since Russ left, ever since Russ left, you know, um, they have done the opposite of what people thought they were going to do, just like Russ did the opposite of what they thought he was going to do in Denver. So he's mm-hmm. going to be good in Denver. It didn't turn out so well. They didn't think that Seattle was going to, you know, be doing as well this year. And look what's going. Look at what's going on. So yeah, I'm, um, you know, they they're playing well. So Seattle this week. Yeah, yeah. There you go. This is uh, Ken Ox and Dime. Next game, sir. Next game is Dallas Washington. Washington looking to you know spoil some spoil some stuff. So, yeah. Mr. Fox, did I tell you how much I really like your team, sir? <laughs> you 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 did a you did a you did a minute or two ago, you know, because of uh, certain things. But you know, I'm I'm gonna still pull with Washington. I don't know what's going on with the uh, with the shuffling of the deck at the quarterback position. I just hope that whatever shuffling that they do, it's the correct shuffling today. <laughs> and they stack the deck against Dallas so that they can go ahead and knock them out. It's going to be an interesting game. One thing I can say, that rivalry right there, that's their Super Bowl. If they never go to the Super Bowl, that's their Super Bowl. So when they play each other, people talk about other stuff. That's their Super Bowl. So, yeah, it's I'm I'm going with Washington again regardless. We, you know what? All right. So being a you know straight up Dallas hater, I'm I'm not even gonna lie. But then think about what what you just said. If you're not in the Cowboys world, every time you come to town is that team Super Bowl. Yes. That, that's how the world looks at you guys. Uh, I mean, that's that's what it is. So it's a crazy rivalry for the Eagles. It's a crazy rivalry for Washington. It's that way for the Giants. When the Cowboys show up, everybody is like, they're ready for them. That is oh. true. All right, you cannot tonight. Next game. Uh, the uh, Lions and Green Bay. Both teams are fighting to get in, but Green, but Aaron Rodgers is real hot for the Lions. Yeah. yeah. You got to watch out for them, though, when they show up, because you never know which Lions team is going to show up. You know, a Lions team will show up that will put up 40 or a Lions team will show up that will give up 40. So, you you know, you you don't know which which team is going to show up with the Lions. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right, Ken, you know I you know you know from, from, um, from Green Bay. I'm going with Green Bay, though. I'm, I'm a – I hate to go against the Lions because of what they've been doing, but I'm a I'm uh, my pick is Green Bay for that game. And it's at Green Bay. Yeah, you know how much I love culture, but uh Aaron Rodgers, he he he's kind of like saying, Don't don't put me out the pasture just yet. 
Yeah. So all the exactly. old men out there, we're like, yeah, go ahead, man, go get it. Yep, 30 degrees at same at, at, at game time. How many? 30, 30 degrees at, at game okay. time. Well. At, at game time. At game time. So it's only going <laughs> to drop. So it's only going to drop. Yeah. There you go. 820. 820 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what that so, means. So, so it's going to drop. Yes. That's why they call it the frozen tundra, baby. That's the frozen tundra. So by halftime, it, it's going to be in the teens. Yeah. Okay. Easily. We're taking Aaron Rodgers on that next game, Mr. Oxen Don. That is it. That is our, our game, uh, our last game of the night. And then we start looking at playoffs. There you go. So we have NFL Talks, Ken Oxen Don, Deion Foster. Hey, folks, we're going to have some, some kind of like we might have some big news coming up with these gentlemen. So we're going to give a media tease that says, uh, you know, stay tuned. We got some really big news coming up. Uh, Mr. Oxen dying him and misses and work some magic out there, but we're just going to leave it at that. So Dion Fox, how can people find you? Uh, Dion.fox at NFLalumni.org. Mr. Fox 57 at gmail.com. Mr. Fox 57 at 5756foundation.org or 5756foundation.org, the website where, you know, creating positive change in the community with the youth, veterans, and their children. So you can find me on any, any one of those streams and at 5756 Foundation on IG. Shout out to Mr. Fox after he was featured on WTVR CBS 6 here in Richmond uh, on his conversation and being interviewed by our man, Smart Lemon, host of The Lemon Drop. A uh, young man out there doing some really big things. Ken Oxendine, how can people find you? Ken Dot Oxendine at NFLalumni.com org, um, Fox Sports Group.com, all things Ken Oxendine and uh, Fox SG uh, for the Brown and Oxendine Sports Group. We can continuously can trying to trying to connect the dots with uh, the community and the youth and and um, everything that can help. Uh, our community grow. That's right. You gentlemen out there doing some really big things uh, out there helping the community be better. That's the foundation of on the mic with Mike. So Mike King Biz here, you can follow me on all social platforms. Mike King Biz, as well as on the mic with Mike RVA. We are the top, uh, we're the only daily business radio program in, in, the, uh, in the central Virginia area. Last year, we donated 24,000 minutes of free airtime to a nonprofit and uh, uh, businesses, and we do it with the support of gentlemen like uh, Ken Ox and uh, Deion Fox out there making it possible for us to do it. Gentlemen, thank you, thank you for coming on. Ken, you know, you got to run. You you know, you're ready to that next generation of uh, you know, young Thundercats out there. Yeah, so yeah. You got to, you know, just remember me when y'all blow up, just remember that dude back, you know, the little dude <laughs> over there, you know, the, yo, let me just get an autograph. Bunny Mike, Mike, gentlemen, take care now. I know. Have good. a good